Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Krishna, I am Rajarshi Das. Welcome to another special program observing the auspicious month of Kartik. On a previous program, we discussed how this auspicious month of Kartik is very dear and very pleasing to the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, and devotees take advantage of the opportunity throughout this month. They would chant morning and evening the beautiful prayers known as Damodarashtakam that appears in the Padma Puran, offering ghee lamps, offering lamps to the Supreme Lord. During this month, people go to Vrindavan, India, and take vrat or vows. Whatever devotion is performed in this month of Kartik. It yields a hundred times more spiritual benefit. We gave the example that you may see some commodity in a store for a hundred dollars, but then on a particular occasion there is a sale, fifty percent discount, and you get the same thing, half the price. Well, special mercy during the month of Karti. So we request everyone to take advantage of this auspicious month. Hear the beautiful prayers called Damodarashtakam. Offer some lamps to Lord Krishna in the form of Damodara being bound by Mother Yashoda with ropes. Offering lamps to Lord Krishna during this month is most auspicious and great spiritual benefit is derived. So on our previous program we discuss this wonderful pastime Mother Yashoda binding Krishna, this pastime actually took place on Diwali day. Yes. So, this is very wonderful. We discussed many activities took place during the month of Karti. Krishna's lifting Govardhan Hill, Mother Yashoda binding Krishna took place on Diwali day. So after Mother Yashoda bound Krishna, then we learn about Krishna pulling down these two huge trees that were in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. And then these two beautiful personalities, effulgent, coming out and offering prayers to Krishna. So the king, the emperor of the earth planet Maharaj Parikshit is inquiring from Shukadev Goswami about the history of these two personalities and Shukadev Goswami is revealing that these two personalities are Manigriva and Nala Kuvara, the sons of Kovera, the treasurer of the Devatas. Now these personalities had the good fortune of having the company of Lord Shiva of which they were very proud and they were very proud of their opulence also. So, while they were enjoying, where? In the Mandakini Ganga. This is a branch of the Ganges. And uh, they were enjoying naked, intoxicated with beautiful young women. And the sage Narad Muni came across, and the young girls, out of respect for Nara, they covered their bodies, but Manigriva and Nalakuvara, they remain indifferent. And as such, Nara Muni, seeing their fallen condition, their misbehavior, he considered what he should do about this situation. So, Nara Muni said, among all the attractions of material enjoyment, the attraction of riches, 
bewilders one's intelligence more than having beautiful bodily features, taking birth in an aristocratic family, and being learned when one is uneducated, but falsely puffed up by wealth. The result is that one engages his wealth in enjoying wine, women, and gambling. Now, people in this age of Kali Yuga, yes, Prabhupada said, little knowledge is dangerous. Kali Yuga consists of people who, Prabhupada say, over-educated shudras, meaning that they own cultured, low class in behavior. So even though they may get some academic or technological knowledge, but their moral standard is actually very low. And that doesn't go down very well. Sometimes they even teach us, but their behavior is quite questionable. So Narad Muni is commenting, he's describing this situation. Now, our situation in Kali Yuga is similar. Full Kali Yuga is filled with uncultured behavior, meat-eating, intoxication, gambling, and illicit sex, as would be evident from Narad's continuing description. Unable, Narad continues, unable to control their senses, rascals who are falsely proud of their riches or their birth in aristocratic families are so cruel that to maintain their perishable bodies, which they think will never grow old or die, they kill poor animals without mercy. Sometimes they kill animals merely to enjoy an excursion. So Srila Prabhupada comments, <clears throat> When the modes of passion and ignorance increase in human society, giving rise to unnecessary economic development, the result is that people become involved with wine, women, and gambling. Then being mad, they maintain big slaughterhouses or occasionally go on pleasure excursions to kill animals, forgetting that however one may try to maintain the body, the body is subject to birth, death, old age, and disease. Such foolish rascals engage in sinful activities one after another. Being duskritis, they completely forget the existence of the Supreme Controller who is sitting within the core of everyone's heart. Ishwara Sarvabhutanam Hridesha Arjuna Tishtati The Supreme Controller is observing every bit of one's activity and he rewards or punishes everyone by giving one a suitable body made by material nature. Brahmayan Sarvabhutani Yantra Rudhani Mayaya. In this way, sinful persons automatically receive punishment in different types of bodies. The root cause of this punishment is that when one unnecessarily accumulates wealth, one becomes more and more degraded, not knowing that his wealth will be finished with his next birth. Nasadhu manye yata atmanoyam asan apiklesha da asha deha. Animal killing is prohibited. Every living being, of course, has to eat something. Jivo jivasya jivanam. But one should be taught what kind of food one should take. 
Therefore the Ishapanishad instructs, Dina Tyaktena Bhunjitaha. One should eat whatever is allotted for human beings. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 9.26, that's chapter 9, verse 26, Patram Pushpam Palam Tuyam Yumi Bhaktya Prayachati Taraham Bhakti Upahritam Ashnami Prayatat Manaha if one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit or water, I will accept it. A devotee, therefore, does not eat anything that would require slaughterhouses that would require slaughterhouses for poor animals. Rather, devotees take prasad of Krishna. Krishna recommends that one give him patram pushpam palam toyam, a leaf, a flower, fruit, or water. Animal food is never recommended for human beings. Instead, a human being is recommended to take prasad, remnants of food left by Krishna. Yagyashishtashinasantu muchyante sarabakil bishai Bhagavad Gita chapter 3 text 13 If one practices eating prasad even if there is some little sinful activity involved one becomes free from the results of sinful acts Very important point You may be a vegetarian and in the course of acquiring this vegetarian food, no doubt. You causing some harm to these plants also. But Krishna's point is that Jivo Jivasya Jivanam. Every living being live at the cost of some other living being. But what has been designated for human beings, that is what Krishna is prescribing. And he's saying that if you offer me what I am prescribing, then a ham twang sarvapa, I will free you from all sin. Mashuchaha, don't worry. So those who prepare food, pure vegetarian food, offering it to Krishna with love and devotion, Krishna says, Ashnami, I will accept. So these are actually practices of a devotee. These are practices that must be entertained in our daily lives. Narad Muni continues, when, when living one may be proud of one's body, thinking oneself a very big man, minister, president, or even demigod. But whatever one may be, after that, this body will turn either into worms, into stool, or into ashes. If one kills poor animals to satisfy the temporary whims of this body, one does not know that he will suffer in his next birth. For such a sinful miscreant must go to hell and suffer the results of his actions. Now if you have doubt about this, you can read the details in the fifth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. The details are given the reactions to sinful activities. You pour intoxicants down your throat at the time of death. The Jamadutas, the servants of Jamaraj, they will pour boiling lead down your throat. Those who cook the flesh of these poor defenseless creatures 
they at the time of death are taken by the Jamadutas and they are fried in boiling oil and all this is done on the subtle platform in other words you're experiencing all the pain but you don't die yes it's all taking place on the subtle platform what it means is at the time of death you leave this gross body this physical body behind but the soul is taken along with the subtle body mind intelligence and false ego and the soul goes on this journey to the lower regions of the universe the abode of Yamaraj the Lord of death some people talk about Maranatha today huh? but they don't know Maranatha Yamaraj the Lord of death yes so when a person goes there if you have any doubts then we can give you the details from the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Third canto also Lord Kapila, adverse fruitive activities. Yes, you can get the details of what will happen for a sinful person when he goes to hell. Of course we know in this very lifetime, just in case you have problem reading Srimad Bhagavatam, well read the newspaper and see the hell that people go through on this planet why do we go through all this suffering krishna says in the gita maya dhyakshena prakriti suite sacharacharam everything works under my supervision are you an atheist don't you believe in god hmm? you think that Innocent persons are put in the material world here and being punished. The Bhagavad says, if you bite your tongue, whom would you blame for it? Would you go knocking out your teeth? If we put ourselves into this world, we are quick to point our finger to this one, that one. Sometimes the finger goes up. God. He is the one who is causing this misery, this problem for me. But we should be very careful. We should know. God is all merciful. He is all loving. He is our Surida Sarva Bhutanam. He is the dear most friend of all living beings. The problem is with us. We have turned away from Him, even though we have a human form we develop intellect we fail to wake up and ask why am I here why do people suffer this hellish condition in this world we fail we try to close our eyes and you know rabbit philosophy ostrich philosophy close your eye and think that trouble gone or bury your head under the sand and think trouble gone or the motorist you drive through the red light and someone say say points out oh, oh I didn't see yeah well there are a lot of things in the human form right now we play we're not seeing Pashyanapi na Pashyati the Bhagavad say although we see but we don't see we see the hell that people are going through every action produces a reaction but we hope or we would like to believe that my sinful activities would go on punish I can deprive other people of their possessions and not have to pay the price I can deprive other living beings of their life and not have to pay the price in fact it is the greatest hypocrisy in our society today when sometimes they want to break the necks of die-hard criminals and some people say this is inhumane 
This is inhumane. It wasn't inhumane for some people to be killed uh, by brute criminals. But if you go to kill the criminal now, it is inhumane. Mind you, we're not just into the business of breaking necks. That no doubt has to be maintained. But you might have to end up breaking some of the neck of some of the leaders too. Why? Because if you don't put a proactive system in place to systematically educate people, educate people in higher values, solution lies in education and training. So if you don't implement a proper system to educate people as to who they are, where they came from, why they're here, what is the goal and what is the means for achieving the goal, then if you have an education system that Srila Prabhupada described as slaughterhouse civilization, meaning that what the butcher does, well, he'll, he'll prepare animals but just for breaking their neck. So if you have a society where you're just producing criminals and breaking their neck, then it sounds like some animal farm business, right? Just producing criminals and breaking their neck. So what we're saying is the material world is a place meant for two purposes. One, to give the rebellious souls an opportunity to try to enjoy their senses, but two, to reform, to rectify them. Yes. So that's the message we'll get from Bhagwat, from the great saintly persons, from the Supreme Lord in the Bhagavad Gita. Otherwise, this blind society today, Narada is pointing out the cruelty of sinful people, how they're devoid of Atma Tattva, knowledge of the self. So he said, yet, Although the body will turn into worms, stool, or ashes, foolish persons, just to maintain it, commit many sinful activities. This is certainly regrettable. The human form of body is actually meant for jivasya tattva jigyasa, enlightenment and knowledge of spiritual values. Therefore one must seek shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. The smart guru prapadyeta. One must approach a guru. Who is guru? Shabde. Shabde parecha nishnatam. Bhagwat 11, 321. A guru is one who has full transcendental knowledge. Unless one approaches a spiritual master, one remains in ignorance. Acharyavan Purusho Veda Chandogya Upanishad 6.14.2 One has full knowledge about life when one is Acharyavan, controlled by the Acharya. But when one is conducted by Rajogun and Tamogun, the modes of passion and ignorance. One does not care about anything. Instead, one acts like an ordinary foolish animal, risking his life, mrityu sangsara vartmani, and therefore continuing to go through suffering after suffering. Nate vidu gatim hi vishnum. Bhagavatam 7, 5, 31. Such a foolish person does not know how to elevate himself in this human body. Instead, he indulges in sinful activities and goes deeper and deeper into hellish life. So this is a dangerous situation in this present age that we are living. So Narad Muni continues he says dehakyam anadatu swam nishektur mature vacha matur piturva balina kritur agne suno piva when alive does this body belong to its employer to the self 
to the father, to the mother, or to the mother's father? Does it belong to the person who takes it away by force, to the slave master who purchases it, or to the sons who burn it in the fire? Or if the body is not burned, does it belong to the dogs that eat it? Among the many possible claimants, who is the rightful claimant? Not to ascertain this, but instead to maintain the body by sinful activities is not good. So Narad is pointing out here, bad business! This body in some cultures, like the Parsi community, they would throw away the body. The dogs and vultures may eat it, it will turn to stool. Some culture they throw it away, then you bury, it will turn into worm you burn, it would turn to ashes. So to not have Atma Tattva, to not have knowledge of the self, and the difference between the self and this body, is it means gross ignorance. So we should be very careful to take the opportunity during these holy occasions like the month of Kartik, to take advantage of these spiritual messages and purify our existence. I'm Rajarshi Das saying Hare Krishna and do join us again next week for a continuing presentation.